God's sure word that serves as a firm foundation for our sermon today is our Old Testament lesson, The Interesting Story of Elijah. In the name of him who loved us and shed his blood for us so that we might be priests and kings in his kingdom, to him be all the glory and the power and the honor forever and ever. Amen. Today we're going to spend some time with a fellow by the name of Elijah. Elijah was a real life prophet uh, with a real life problem. Elijah was depressed. He had it bad. He was burned out and ready to throw in the towel. That is, until by God's good grace, he came to embrace an awesome truth that I hope that all of us here today would come to truly trust in. Namely, that when we Christians stumble in life, we always, not sometimes, not most of the time, but we always fall into the loving hands of the one true God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, it all started on Mount Carmel. Evil King Ahab and Queen Jezebel wanted to whack that pesky prophet Elijah. You see, they believed in and so they worshipped the false god Baal. So they sent 450 prophets of Baal to have a little showdown with Elijah. Here's how it went down. They all gathered on the top of Mount Carmel. Both Elijah and the prophets of Baal agreed that they would each build their own pile of wood. And then they would take turns praying to their respective God. And whichever God was the first to send down fire and burn up their pile of wood, well, he had to be the one true God, the maker of heaven and earth. So, picture this. The prophets of Baal won the coin toss. So they went first. All day long, they begged and pleaded and whined to Baal. And the result? Nada! Zippo! Zilch! Now, it was Elijah's turn. First, he poured bucket after bucket of water on his wood. Now that was important because you see all of this was taking place in the midst of a drought that was so deadly it makes what is happening in the western part of our country pale in comparison. And then Elijah offered up one teeny tiny prayer to Jesus and Boom! Fire fell down and burned up Elijah's wet wood and then jumped on over and burned up the other pile of wood. Elijah then slaughtered the 450 prophets of Baal. Now, you would think after all of that, Elijah would be riding high after this mountaintop experience. Uh, but the fact of the matter is, Elijah felt like a failure. After all, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel still ruled over the nation of Israel. Most of the people of Israel still worshipped Baal. And so Elijah fell into a deep, dark depression. Consequently, he hid out. He hid out in a deep, dark cave. But he wasn't alone. What are you doing in there? Jesus asked him. Listen now to Elijah's reply. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have, have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. 
Now, if you were a psychiatrist and Elijah was camped out on your couch, what symptoms of depression would you recognize in Elijah's angry speech? Allow me to read a portion of it again. I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. Well, this is symptom number one. Elijah was consumed with frustration. After all, he'd spent his entire life faithfully fighting for the Lord Jesus Christ. And what did he get for all of his faithfulness? Pain and problems. Symptom number two. Elijah is lonely and he's afraid. Listen again to his words. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. Well, Elijah was right about that. When Queen Jezebel heard that Elijah had killed her prophets of Baal, she sent word to Elijah that he was as good as dead meat. That's why Elijah was in that cave hiding out like some kind of Osama bin Laden. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, have you ever felt like that? Have you ever felt like you just can't handle one more of life's demands? Is there something at work, something at school, something at home that is deeply, darkly depressing you? Well, Elijah had a blessing coming his way. You see, Jesus heard his complaints and he offered him what I call the Elijah prescription for depression. Listen to the words that came to Elijah. Go out. Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. You see, Jesus was going to teach Elijah and all of us this morning how he works and how he wins in our lives. So picture this. First, there came a wind that was so strong, so mighty, that it literally smashed the side of the mountain. But Elijah would learn that Jesus wasn't in that wind. Next, there came a 10.0 on the Richter scale earthquake that, that flattened Elijah. But Jesus wasn't in that earthquake either. Finally, there rose up a fire that was so fierce that it makes the fires out in the northwest of our country why, make it seem like, like a campfire. But Elijah learned Jesus wasn't in that fire either. All through this, Elijah had to begin to wonder. If my God is the almighty God who could destroy a sinful world through a worldwide flood, if my God is the almighty God who could destroy, knock down the walls of mighty Jericho, and by the way, those walls were up to 15 feet thick, if my God could do all of that, then why am I still, why am I down in the dumps? Why is my pain still real? Why do my tears never seem to stop coming? Brothers and sisters in Christ, are you filled with wondering right now? Do you wonder why, if your God is the almighty maker of heaven and earth, why hasn't he dealt with our pain? Why hasn't he dried up our tears? Why do fears and frustrations still consume us in those deep, dark moments? Well, let's see if Jesus really was with Elijah. Again, picture this. That, that mighty wind, it died down. The earth quit shaking. The fire 
flickered out. And then there came the sound of a still, quiet whisper. At the sound of it, Elijah put his hoodie over his head and, and he walked out to the edge of the mouth of the cave. You see, Jesus was about to teach Elijah and us how he works and how he wins in our lives. Elijah was about ready to receive a lesson that would bring him a brand new lease on life. You see, Jesus does not work in our lives the way that we think he should. He doesn't work in our lives through powerful and dramatic ways. Instead, he whispers to us. He whispers his grace to us. But when you think about it, that's the way it should be. Because didn't God save this world? Didn't God save you and me through a whisper? Through the whisper of a, a miraculously conceived baby boy born in Bethlehem? Didn't God save you and me through the gentle whisper of a gentle man who said in life, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest? And at the point of death prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Doesn't God save you and me through the sweet whisper of the gospel of the cross, that through the suffering and the death of the Son of God and the Son of Mary, we have God's full love and forgiveness and eternal life? Doesn't God save us through the whisper of the good news of Easter morning? That the empty tomb means that we have an eternal life stretching out before us, filled with God's love and God's forgiveness and God's blessings. Jesus heard Elijah's complaints and he answered them. He told Elijah that Elijah was not all alone, but that he had reserved this tiny little flock of 7,000 people among millions who had not bent their knee and worshipped Baal. Brothers and sisters in Christ, are you feeling alone right now? I've read that one out of ten people experience depression at one time or another in their lives. If you are hurting right now, if you're in a deep, dark place in your life right now, then know this, you are not alone. There are lots of people here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church and School who are going through it with you. There are lots of people here at St. Paul's who understand what you're going through. Lots of people are praying for you. St. Paul's cares for you. In fact, a little later on this morning, there's a Bible class offered based on a book, an autographical book, written by an LCMS pastor about what his life was like as he experienced depression and how the Lord Jesus worked in his life through it. I would encourage you to attend that Bible class, or, or if you know a friend, next week you can invite him to come. It won't be too late, even though it starts today. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're hurting right now, if pain is filling your lives and tears come too often in your life, I would encourage you to go to that same mountain that Elijah went to, that mountain where he heard that gentle whisper of God's good grace to him. Go to your baptism. You see, there Jesus gently whispers to you, you are my child. Here is my forgiveness. Here is my Holy Spirit to walk and talk and comfort you all the days of your life. Come to Jesus at the communion rail. Here Jesus whispers to you, along with this bread and along with this wine, I'm giving you myself. Here's my
my body that was nailed to that cross. Here's my blood that was shed so that you can know I'll never withhold my love from you. I'll never hold back my forgiveness to you. Here it is. Live with it. Brothers and sisters in Christ, you are never alone. You have a Savior who fully understands what you're going through. You have a brother who walks and talks with you. And you see, that, that is the Elijah prescription for depression. To God alone be the glory. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all of our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in that one faith that leads to life everlasting.